How's it going, y'all? So I want to talk a little bit about React hooks, and more specifically, if you're using this ESLint plugin um, called React Hooks Recommended, which most people recommend that you have this set up if you're doing React development, you might see an error like this where it says, like, you're trying to call an effect, and inside that effect you call a function, and it's saying that, hey, like, your dependency arrays is missing get Pokemon. Okay, so I want to kind of walk you through my understanding of this. I'm not fully grasping a lot of the stuff, but let me just try to break it down for you because I'm sure you've run into this if you're using like Next or any type of linter. So obviously when this component first renders, we want to fetch all of the Pokemon from this Pokemon API, right? So this is a URL that when you do a get request on it, it gives you back a list of Pokemon. And we are basically just calling that URL using the fetch method. We get back the results and we get back the Pokemon. So the results actually has all the Pokemon in it. It's an array of Pokemon. And we set that on state. So that should be pretty straightforward. I'm sure you've done some type of on mount event or effect here before. And the fact that we have an empty dependency array means that this is only going to happen once when we mount the component. So this is complaining. If you hover over this, it tells you the exact rule, the exhaustive depths rule. Um, obviously, the quickest fix for this, if you don't want this crap annoying you, you just go here and you turn it off, right? Just turn the rule off. But a lot of people in the React community say that this is important. You should keep it on. Um, so at least keep it as warn. You can also turn it as error, I believe, if you want to. If you want your app to just not compile or not run, you could do error and then like you'll get a red squiggly. But let's just keep it as warn for now. So how do you actually fix this? We kind of explained what's going on, or maybe we didn't explain what's going on. So the so the reason this is complaining is because this effect is calling a function. And in order to like kind of quote unquote do proper react, you want any external dependencies that the effect is depending on to kind of be put into dependencies arrays in case the component were to be passed in different props or something were, were to change with how this thing was defined. You want to make sure that the effect reruns and it's really kind of use case by use case some instances you want it to be an on mount so you can keep it as a warning like disable it but other cases like this can actually catch real bugs in your code which is why they recommend you turn on okay i don't know if i explained that well but hopefully you can understand like the the gist of it so how do you actually fix this issue like what is the the what are some approaches to fix it well the first one is i would personally i would take this code and don't put it in your component, right? You want to abstract your component away from the actual like service calls, in my opinion. So just cut this code out, put it up top. And instead of this actually calling set Pokemon, like this doesn't need to know about state. Keep it abstract from React. All it needs to know is that it needs to return some Pokemon, okay? And when we do that, we can simply go here and say then set Pokemon. All right, so the reason this fixes the issue is because when this index.js page loads, this method is only going to be created once. It doesn't get recreated on re-render. It just gets created once. And one thing I probably should talk about is, maybe I didn't mention it before. If I were to undo all this and go back to the old approach that was kind of quote unquote broken, the reason this, like I can't just put get Pokemon in here. Um, let me show you what happens. <laughs> you might have seen this, this infinite, requests of, of doom so if i post this get pokemon here you might think okay that should fix it um and i'm going to save this luckily this linter is telling me that there's going to be an issue but if i save this if i go back to my ui notice that it ref um let me stop this real quick it continuously fetches all the pokemon from the api over and over again in an infinite loop and the reason this is happening is because when you put get pokemon in this dependencies array it's going to fetch the Pokemon, which then sets state on React, which then is going to set Pokemon state here, which is going to cause the component to re-render, which is going to say, and then React's going to see that, hey, you know, this get Pokemon thing has been redeclared again, because we're redeclaring this function every time this component gets re-rendered, right? So every single time you change state or you pass in a different type of props, we're going to recreate this function, which is going to re-invoke this use effect. So then you get this infinite loop of just like fetching Pokemon, setting Pokemon, fetching Pokemon, setting Pokemon. Um, 
So let me show you another fix. I showed you how you can kind of pull these up to the top, but let's say you want to keep these in your actual React component. Well, another approach, I don't recommend this approach, but another approach is you could just put this straight inside your use effect, right? Just put this code here. And now this effect doesn't depend on any external function that might be reinitialized every single re-render. Um, again, I, I'm not a fan of this approach because I don't like to couple my API endpoint logic to my actual React component. But that is one fix. And hopefully you understand why that's a fix because this is only going to initialize these functions once and then call it. And then we don't care about anything because this effect, this whole function here is not calling any external function. It's not calling any state things. Well, I guess technically it's calling set Pokemon, but my linter's not complaining. So I guess we don't need to put it here. But let me show you another way. I'm going to show you all the ways I can think of to kind of fix this issue. So there's another thing that you can use called use callback or use memo. I'm going to use the use callback hook and just kind of show you how you can fix this. So let's say we have a function here and we need to pass it as a dependencies array. So one quick little fix you can do is you can actually say use callback. There's a use callback hook and you can pass it. But let me make sure I to actually type in callback. And I'm going to go up here and import this real quick. All right, so now let's go back to the UI, make sure it's not like looping forever. All right, so it did a fetch for Pokemon, and that's it, one fetch. So this is working fine. The linter is not complaining. And what's going on is that the use callback hook. I'm not sure what it does internally. It might have like a use ref call or something, but basically it takes whatever function you pass it and it kind of caches it. So if you were to keep on re-rendering this home, it doesn't return different references to this function. It's going to return the exact same function reference every single time. And if for some reason you, you know, maybe you wanted to change this based on a property that was passed in, um, you could easily just you know, put that here as a dependency, this thing would re-render. Let me give you a better example. Let's say this is ID and you needed to actually pass the ID here. Uh, this is kind of pseudocode. This code probably won't work 100% well. So I'm just kind of giving you an example, but let's say you wanted to do this. So every time that the ID of the Pokemon is passed in, you want to basically reinitialize this function and just have a cached version laying around based on the ID. So this is another solution. I don't really like this approach either. It just seems hacky. It just seems like over complication just to simply fetch some API data. I would again, just put your API calls up here and just try to get it to work that way. There's also another thing you can do called use memo. And the only difference between use effect or use callback and use memo is that use memo is supposed to take a value, right? So it's a little bit more different. Like use memo would be an actual, <clears throat> like if I want to get this to work, I think I could provide a function here. Let me go ahead and do that and see if it still works. Okay, so go ahead and see what happens. Well, I, I added this ID crap everywhere. So let me just go ahead and get rid of that and show you. Two seconds, two seconds. All right, let's see if this works. So again, this is working. Um, and the difference between use memo is that use memo takes a value, right? So you have to pass it a value, not a function, um, which is confusing because I am passing it a function, but this is actually a function that calls a function. Um, and the reason is because I think use memo requires a function to return a value. And this is the value that it's returning. So super confusing, which is why I would recommend using the use callback in this uh, example, use callback. And then you have to do that stuff, but it's kind of two ways to do the same thing. Um, but yeah, hopefully you learned something from this. So I kind of showed you how use effect kind of works, why sometimes use effect is called over and over and over again with an infinite loop if you don't do this correctly. But if you enjoyed watching this, give me a thumbs up and have a good day and happy coding.